trillions of cicadas are getting ready to take flight on the East Coast. And yes, you heard that correctly, trillions. At first you might think, oh, that's awful or disgusting. But as Ginger Z explains in this week's It's Not Too Late, we should celebrate one of nature's greatest marvels. Hi, I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. And I have a warning for you. The cicadas are coming. The loud, the plentiful, the awesome aphid is just weeks from emerging. And can we just get one simple fact out of the way? It is not a locust. And here's something so fascinating. This particular breed uses the base of trees, the root system, and they are underground for 17 years. It's quite a spectacle. It's, it's one of the natural wonders of the world. And, uh, you know, a lot of people always call in or write into us about how do I get rid of them and, and all that. And the best thing I can say is just sit back and, and appreciate it, if not enjoy it for what it is. You can't really get rid of them and you probably don't want to. They're a natural part of our forests. And while some of you might be dreading that invasion or maybe you've seen one of these before, well, this is good news because it actually means that our ecosystem's doing well. I spoke with a guy named John Cooley. He's a cicada expert and he runs the Cicada Project at the University of Connecticut. He was telling me that the cicada's been around for millions of years and they've adapted to all different types of changes in the climate. This female took about 30 minutes to emerge from her nymphal skeleton. However, they have never seen the rapidity of change that we have happening right now because of us. So they really don't know how the cicada is going to react. We're talking about something that happens on the scale of 150 years. That's unprecedented. And how they will respond to it, it's really not enough time for them to adapt in an evolutionary sense. You're talking, you know, for cicada, 150 years, you're talking less than 10 generations. So that isn't much. Um, what'll happen to them? It's a good question. And that's really important. Entomologists tell us that when the bugs go down, we're in huge trouble. We know that it's already happening to the big pollinators, like the bees. I've done so many stories on the bees. And when I went down to Mexico in 2012 to see where all the monarchs migrate to, their story has not been a great one since then. But they aren't the only insects. Insects are so important. Insects and, and their allies, invertebrates, the spiders, uh, the crustaceans, the snails. These are animals that are really driving our uh, ecosystems and helping humans in really a meaningful way. So I like to say, if you like birds in your backyard, you should like insects because 96% of songbirds feed insects to their young. If we didn't have insects, we wouldn't have songbirds. If you like to eat salmon, you should thank an insect because these salmon um, grow up in streams where they're eating insects uh, as young before they get out to the ocean where they could be caught and eaten. Even animals like grizzly bears, they eat salmon, which rely on insects, and they eat berries, which rely on insect pollination. And that gets us right back to humans. One third of all of our food relies on insect pollinators. If you like our most nutritious foods, if you like a good salad, uh, if you like our fruits and berries, you can thank an insect. So really insects are driving these systems and without them we'd be in real trouble. And bugs, at least on land, are disappearing. And a lot of it is because of extreme swings in temperatures, but more so the invasion of us into their territory. One paper that looked at thousands of studies found that the numbers, as far as decline goes, 9% of land insects declining every decade. The major causes of biodiversity loss are, as people have said, the death by a thousand cuts, right? We just impede into every part of these animals' lives. And unfortunately, study after study on group after group shows that all of these animals or that the groups that are studied are declining at an alarming rate. Uh, and, and we really should all be concerned and, and it should be a wake-up call for, for all of us, then without these animals, um, we're going to be in a world of hurt.
But it's not all bad news. Freshwater insect numbers are up, and a lot of that's because we've started protecting that water. So hopefully I've endeared you a bit to the cicada. And if so, and you suddenly care, it's really easy to help. All insects eat sustainable foods, plant some flowers, don't use pesticides, and don't kill them. And I promise it's not too late. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.